To start, me and my mother-in-law have never gotten along. She hates my guts and can be oversensitive frequently. I tried not to give her the wrong impression about me, but we just don't like each other. Sunday, I was feeling sick. I'm a new mom, by the way, and couldn't eat what she had cooked for dinner, and she seemed to take it personally. Finally, she sent me a private message of what seemed to be her final straw with my behavior, and it stated the following. Oh, yes, I know and feel your passive-aggressive vibe. You keep pretending to be sick so you won't have to eat what I cook? What? Do you think my cooking is disgusting? Do you think I'm unhygienic? When was the last time you looked at yourself in the mirror? Apologies. I forgot you're a new mom and can't be bothered even to get your hair brushed. You finally trapped our son and now want to use the baby as a pawn. I don't like the fact that you're my grandchild's mother. I don't think I'll ever come to terms with it because you bore him. But I'll pretend. Pretend I don't know my son's been having chats with his ex every chance he gets. Be mean to his mommy, me, and you'll see how far that gets you. Oh, and when I watch your crap dog, it stays chained to a garage day and night until a half hour before you arrive. It stinks up my house. You know, same with your hair and clothes. My mind was blown, and my gut reaction was to immediately go to my husband and show him what his mom sent, and he didn't take it well. He tried calling her, but she didn't respond. It was 11 p.m., and he decided to drive to his parents' house and pick a fight with her about the text. According to my sister-in-law who witnessed it, he yelled at his mother, scolded her, and called her names, then disowned her, which shocked everyone in the house. My mother-in-law is diabetic. She fainted on the spot, and my husband didn't stop. He just walked out of there while his family was yelling at him. I got several calls and texts from them, claiming I had just caused irreparable damage in my husband's relationship with his mother that I jeopardized her health because she was taken to the hospital and worst of all, making my husband disown her over what? A dinner I could have taken a few bites of? A simple misunderstanding? They accused me of causing this crap show, turning my husband on his mother and disowning her like that. Another sister-in-law berated me for sharing the text with my husband, saying I should have confronted my mother-in-law alone instead of escalating the situation. She said that I'm responsible for whatever happens next and have to fix the problem I created. I feel awful overall and guilty since she's at the hospital and the family is tense. My husband is avoiding me. Am I the idiot? Oh no, you didn't cause that damage and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Your mother-in-law caused all that pain and decided that sending a message to hurt you purposely was the way to go. She probably expected you to be so hurt by that message, especially the part where she threw in about your husband chatting with his ex, that you would end up fighting with him. Instead, you showed him, and you got him to see just how spiteful mother-in-law is towards you. Sadly, she is in the hospital, though, but that's not your fault either. Also, being a new mom is hard. You're already dealing with enough stress as it is. You don't need this. Good luck and congrats on the new bub. Nurse here. You don't fate from being upset because you have diabetes. That makes no sense. You can faint if your blood sugars are off, but the fainting is her being dramatic, nothing to do with diabetes. How ridiculous. She probably fainted for hoping that this would make her son apologize and turn against his wife. Unfortunately, it worked with the rest of the family. Not the idiot. Rule number one with toxic families, let the related partner handle their own family. You did the right thing by showing him the text and not escalating the matter by yourself, and it was his decision how to react. Mommy Dearest was so shocked that her son would choose to defend you, she probably fainted out of shock. Let's not lose sight of the fact that she's an animal abuser. You can report her for that. She admitted it in writing. The odds are that her claim that she tortures your pet to punish you is true, and a real insight into her character and regardless of what reconciliation may take place in the future, do not ever leave your children alone in the care of this woman for a single instant. Perhaps I should have said pretended reconciliation because I doubt that your mother-in-law will ever truly change the toxic hatred she feels. My sister and I are twins. We are both in the same chemistry class. We both want to go to med school. We do not live in the U.S. 
We recently had a test and I scored a 96% and she scored 28%. She normally scores low grades and I normally score high grades. Our parents tell us that our privileges are linked to our grades. We get good grades, we get more allowance, we get more TV time. We get grounded for bad grades. Our parents consider a good grade more than 75% and a bad grade less than 50%. I was obviously very happy with my grade and was eager to tell my mom and dad. When my sister broke down in tears, as this is the third test she has failed in a row, before anyone asked, no, she does not have a mental disability. On our way home, she begged me not to mention the test grades to our mom and dad and just pretend that we hadn't gotten them back yet. I said no, and she cried as we walked in. When our parents got home, I told them about my 96%, and they congratulated me. My sister was asked about her grade, and she told them. They obviously were very disappointed and grounded her for a week. My sister has been insanely angry with me, saying I can't get over my golden child complex and let her live in peace for even a day. But to be honest, her last grounding had just ended the day before because she failed a maths test. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. I understand being proud of your achievements, but you could have held off for a day or two on telling your parents about the grade while your sister collected and readied herself to tell about her grade. I agree with your sister. Personally, it sounds like you do have a golden child complex. You think that just because you're book smart and quicker to absorb information, you're smarter and more valuable than her. There's a thin line between confidence and cockiness, and you're crossing that line. You are the idiot. There was no need to throw your sibling under the bus like that. We all struggle with different things. Your sister with chemistry, and you not being an utter idiot. Next time, instead of making your sibling's existence miserable for your own selfish satisfaction, how about you help her out with the study? You are the villain in this story, no one else. Going solely off of your complete lack of empathy, I hope you are never my doctor. Your sister is failing multiple tests in a row. She obviously needs help slash tutoring rather than punitive punishment. Would you be able to help her? Or would she accept tutoring from a third party? Maybe talk to your parents about a more productive way to support her education. Not the idiot for getting good grades yourself, but there's a lot more you could do to support your sister. I mean, who's to say she isn't? All she did was tell her parents her grade. A tutor could help, but that's not on the sister to do. That's on the parents. Really, three failed tests should be a signal to either study harder or the parents need to get a tutor. Maybe she really does have a learning deficiency. 28% is awful. It sounds like she either doesn't study at all or she has a learning disability. When I met my wife, my family, not this specific sister, were idiots to her. My mom found her annoying and said she shouldn't have to interact at all. And when I didn't let that fly, she was very rude to my girlfriend. My younger sister said I was ruining our family and became very aggressive. I had to cut them out of my life which was the hardest thing I've ever done. I still have a hard time thinking that I can never speak to my mom again, but I knew that was what I had to do to be a good husband. My middle sister was never really involved. When I cut my mom out, my younger sister cut me out, and my middle sister, Jane, said she would stand by me though she thought I should fix things with our mom. My wife and I have two beautiful kids, and Jane is the only one in my family who has ever met them and the only person I have left from my family of origin. My mom wasn't at my wedding. I've never met her husband, never met my niece from my other sister, and it still makes me sad. Due to the issues with my mom, my wife and I had a tiny wedding. It was just the courthouse and a few friends. I know that wasn't her childhood dream. She is totally the princess type who has been dreaming about a wedding since she was a child. My mom had always said she would pay for mine, but obviously didn't. My mom got married a year later and I found my wife creeping on her social media and looking at the pictures and crying. I comforted her the best I could, but she was very upset that my mom didn't deserve it and that she would never get the chance to have her wedding. Now Jane is getting married and my mom is paying for everything. My mom has a lot of money and I know Jane's wedding will be over the top. I'm going to be walking Jane down the aisle my mom and the other sister will be there, but we've seen them plenty of times during the no contact 
and it has never been an issue. Neither are interested in resuming contact, and they stay away from us. My wife said her issue is completely about how much it hurts to see Jane get the wedding she didn't get, and that she isn't going to come with me because it'll hurt too badly. I asked her to reconsider, because I'd feel awkward being there on my own, and Jane is the only family I have left. My wife said she was sorry, but it just hurts too much to see someone else have a big wedding. Since our wedding, she has avoided others and declined to be a bridesmaid a couple of years ago because she said she couldn't get childcare, which wasn't true, and she knew I could get those days off work. I called her selfish for not coming to Jane's wedding and said she doesn't care about me and cares more about a party. My wife was devastated and said I invalidated her feelings and I didn't try to understand. Things have been awkward for the past two days over what I said. Honestly, from reading all that, I see why your mom and other sister don't like her. Stalking your mom's social media and crying over her wedding photos? Refusing to go to your middle sister's wedding because she didn't get the dream wedding she wanted? I'm sorry, but your wife is way too hung up on this wedding she never had, which I get, but at the same time, she's letting that influence how she treats the sister that didn't do anything to her, and that's not right. I'm not a huge wedding person, but I can see why the wife is upset. A wedding is a gathering of your family and friends to celebrate and validate your relationship. Your mother and sister were openly cruel to her, and she was never accepted into the family. Of course it would hurt to go see the people who openly rejected you embrace someone else. Let's put all the unkindness towards your wife to the side for one moment and talk about her wedding. Why did you guys have a small wedding? Were you both always counting on your mother's money to fund your wedding? When I was married, none of the parents paid anything, and we had an awesome wedding. So I don't see why your family had anything whatsoever to do with what kind of wedding you had. Is she just upset that she didn't get the money from her mother-in-law that she hoped for? It seems a bizarre thing to rely on. What am I missing? Everyone's the idiot here. You've made it clear that she has avoided all weddings. Even if she had a good relationship with Jane, why would she want to walk straight into the wolf's den where the entire family has hated her from day one? With all this bad blood and NC, having your wife there would probably create problems or drama on your sister's wedding day, and she deserves to have a nice day. Your wife needs to find a way to get past the fact that she didn't get her dream wedding. The point of marriage is not the dress or the party, it's the commitment you made to spend the rest of your life with the person you love. I have two kids, son and daughter. Every other week I take them to activities in a particular mall, and in between we go to a local fast food chain. Now I usually have my kids have a healthy diet, but I let them choose whatever they want for those rare occasions. I don't believe going to a fast food place, but then restricting their order to enjoy rather unhealthy food makes sense. So the kids menu comes with many different options, and the menu even has pictures of all the food. They go every week, so they know. My son chose chicken nuggets and fries as the main, a drink and a cookie for dessert. Just what I would have expected. My daughter picked the chicken Caesar salad. I did not expect that. I asked if she was sure, explained it did not come with fries. She loves fries. She insisted. The last time I had the salad, she tried one of the croutons and a piece of chicken and loved them. I didn't care too much and a Caesar salad is great. It's not like just snacking a few salad leaves like a rabbit. Their sauce, cheese, chicken, fried chicken, and croutons as extras. Plus she had ice cream for dessert. While well, the food came, we sat down and after taking a few bites, she started complaining about the food. She saw my son eat his chicken nuggets and dip the fries in the sauce. She asked him for one. He let her try the fries and gave her a nugget, as he usually can't finish all anyways. Then she decided that instead of the salad, she wanted fries now. I said no, she had to eat the salad. Or, well, I would not make her eat it, but I won't buy her fries instead. My argument is that she chose it. She's old enough to make that choice, and there's nothing wrong with the salad. It looks delicious. I even offered to give her some of my meal, a baguette sandwich, but now she wants nuggets and fries. She started throwing a fit. I ignored it and told her to sit and eat or stop screaming now or there would be consequences. Some old lady heard her and I guess she picked up the it's not fair that he gets nuggies and fries and she has to eat that stupid salad. 
Well, the lady went off on me. How am I treating my kids unfairly and how I should not body shame my daughter? I told her to get out of my business and shut up. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Note, my son is extremely slim for his age. He is a very active child and quite tall. He's underweight, but his doctor says it's nothing to worry about. My daughter is on the heavier side of average. So it might have seemed like it was because my daughter is not as extremely skinny that she didn't get the fried food, which is not what happened. Am I the idiot for making my daughter eat the salad she chose instead of buying her nuggets and fries like her brother? Not the idiot. And really, you should stop listening to random people about how to raise your children. You are teaching your daughter accountability for her choices and understanding that not always there's going to be do-overs in life. Exactly. This is the way kids start to learn to live with their decisions. By messing up small, relatively inconsequential ones, and not having mommy or daddy fix it for them. It's not like they won't get another meal in six hours or so anyway. Hopefully being unhappy with her lunch choice at a young age will lead her to not marrying the wrong person later on. OP, I think you have every right to parent your kid. And obviously sticking with choices is a big one. But if your daughter is on the heavier side of average at a young age, she's probably already internalizing some degree of fat shaming. I remember trying to diet in second grade and was skipping meals by fifth. So please make sure that this wasn't a case of your daughter trying to eat a healthy salad, but then regretting the choice.